This is Sparta! Welcome to the Spartan Show on BSAFC TV. Here at Kicks Leisure at Silverlink. I'm Johnny Hall. And I'm Mark Crothers. Coming up on today's show, we look at Saturday's impressive win over Chorley. Mark catches up with goalkeeping coach John Bottenshine to find out about the current situation between the sticks at Croft Park. And we look ahead to Saturday's trip to Nantwich Town. So we'll start with that impressive 3-1 win over Chorley on Saturday. And Mark, uh, nobody saw it coming, but uh, the Spartans lads did themselves proud out there. Yeah, Croft Park's really becoming a fortress this season, isn't it? And, you know, it's like it's eight wins in the last nine. Only Marine have left uh, Croft Park with with anything when they got a point. And and Saturday was just a culmination of a lot of hard work. Um, we did have to ride a bit of a wave in the first half. Forty minutes of, of pressure. Uh, Connor Grant's made a couple of strong saves in the first half. And then the last the last minute, I think it was, wasn't it, of of the first half with uh, what I would say is a an underestimated goal from. Uh, from Dan Maguire, the build-up showed everything that Tom Waits trying to get out of the Spartans lineup. Uh, if you just watch the the one and two touch pass and the the dummy run from Matthew Wade and the little intricate through ball from from Louis Horner, and then obviously a great finish from from Dan Maguire, who's in great form. Then Neil Hooks's free kick uh, again came from uh, the award of a free kick from some nice intricate football again, and a quality free kick. I would say I think the goalkeeper was maybe out of position on it. Uh, would probably look at himself there. And then second half, you, you look at Conor Grant making a, a massive save, a brave save to, to keep Spartans ahead. And then after that, it, it was pretty comfortable, I thought. Um, Danny Parker with a wonderful header at the end and a, a good corner from, from Maguire as well. It was a deserved three points for me. Um, I've seen a few things said from the, the Chorley manager since Saturday and I don't particularly agree with him saying that he thought they were comfortably worth a point. I, I would have to disagree with that. Well, that's how I'm going with my next question. Uh, in the second half especially, they made a really, really good side in Chorley. Look relatively ordinary and, most importantly, kept themselves in that playoff fight. Yeah, they have, and, and really the win's got to give them belief that they can do this. You know, the, the playoff place is there for the taking. Um, there's been a few things said about how young the side is, um, but in terms of their development as a team, they are still growing. And, and you've got a lot of lads playing the first seasons in this division. Um, we keep talking about next season might be their season. But there's still a lot of time left in this season and, and hopefully that playoff push will continue. But Saturday should give them belief that they can go on and, and nick a, a playoff spot because it will be deserved. Conor Grant put in a strong performance on Saturday to stake his claim for a regular start and place at Spartans. Mark caught up with goalkeeping coach John Bottenshine to discuss the race for the number one shirt. Right John, we're two thirds away through the season now as goalkeeper coach. How do you assess both keepers' performances? Yeah, well, basically, I think what you've got, we've got two young goalkeepers, two very good goalkeepers, but I think there's little areas in both the games that need development, need to look at it, and basically improve on. But I think we've got, as I say, we've got two great keepers, and I think there's a lot of potential in the pair of them, and if we can get it out, you know, I think the club's going to be all right with the two lads they've got. And since you come to the club in the summer, how have you, how have you managed to improve their performances? It's just basically putting a belief into them, uh, a confidence. You know, what's the, the big thing that's missing at the minute is consistency from the pair of them. You know, they've both had a run of games about 15 or 16 games. As I say, they've done great things and they've done lots of good things. Connor's performance on Saturday was excellent, but so was his performance down in Marine at the first game of the season. But three or four games in, there's a couple of goals you're looking at and you're thinking, should be doing better with. But it isn't, we're not having to go at them. We're trying to make them better keepers. We saw Mike's performance, sorry, his debut at Witten. It was fantastic, it was outstanding. Went down to Chorley on a Tuesday night, a little bit different. Facilities, lights, all that sort of stuff. And all that's a learning curve for the pair of them. And you mentioned Connor's performance against Chorley on Saturday. Mm -hmm. A real big plus for him and for the team. Without a doubt. I mean, there was not just one save that turned the game, there was two saves. There was a, but the, the first one in the first half, from a goalkeeping coaching point of view, was better than the block. I mean, I know the block looked better for you lads on the telly, but the first one was 
absolutely technically superb. I mean, it's what we're talking about parrying and deflecting, and he deflected it away from the danger areas. If he'd have parried it, it could have gone back into the middle, open goal because he's on the ground, but he got it away from his goal. And you've got to give the kid credit for his awareness of her in his box, and that's the thing that we need to bring in to Connor his man management of his box, man management of players. I mean, this term, great shot stoppers. Does my area. There's more to goalkeeper than being a great shot stopper, and this is the areas that we're trying to improve on the pair of them. And Connor got his chance through through Michal being in America on trial. Yeah, that's uh, right. That's a real plus for the club as well that he's being looked at by by mm -hmm. clubs over there. Yeah, I mean he came to us a couple of weeks ago, and he said that there was something on the table. And obviously we haven't heard from him, so he's been over there a week. So I know there was a there's a first round draft on or whatever they do over there. So he must have gotten through that. Uh, he's a very capable goalkeeper. And uh, to be honest, it'll be suited over there because it's a totally different game at times. You know, I mean, Mike likes to play from the back, as you're saying. His hand distribution is one of the best that I've seen from the back. And um, kicking's not so good, but we're working on that, and he's getting there. But as I say, the game over there might suit Mike better than what it does over here. But if he can get them, what we look at from a goalkeeper's point over here, and that over there, then he's got both sides of it, you know. And you came at the club in, in July, I think it was, and worked alongside the likes of, of Tom Wade. Colin Myers, you've got Bev Doctor here and Chris mm -hmm. Fairless. How do you see yourself fit into that unit over the last six months? Yeah, well, I just like to keep myself away from it because the goalkeeping position is just totally separate from everything else. Yes, it's part of the team, but I mean, I keep out the way of it. You know, if they ask me opinion, I'll give them it. You know, but as I say, I just like to keep out the way, do my own stuff, come do the training, come match day, and just shoot off and go home. And if the lads have performed well, then I'm happy, and the lads are happy. On Saturday, Spartans travelled to Cheshire to take on Nantwich Town, looking to continue a fantastic start to 2014. Uh, Mark, uh, these sides have obviously already come together one, one, once this season, and uh, it was quite a disappointing start for Spartans, but it turned out to be quite a thrilling end to the game at Croft Park. Yeah, it was a, a funny old game, wasn't it? Game of two halves, if anything, the, the stereotypical game of two halves. Um, we, we allowed Nantwich to, to go in front. Aaron Burns, a danger man, uh, who no doubt we'll discuss later, yeah. um, putting them ahead. Then it went to 2-0. Um, Spartans got back in second half, I think it was. Arjun Pure while scoring. And then, and then as he normally does, Dan McGuire uh, scoring a, a wonderful strike from around 20 yards, as I remember it. Um, both teams had chances to win the game as well. It's one of the, the closest games we've seen at Croft Park this season. So Saturday's trip, it'll be a tough one. And obviously it's a difficult one to call because Spartans are unbeaten in 2014, but uh, that away record is, is still a sort of monkey on the, on the back of this Spartan side. And of course you mentioned the, the danger men like Aaron Burns who are, are always going to cause Spartans a, a bit of trouble. Yeah, Aaron when he was at, at Ashton United last season I think scored home and away against us and, and really is a, a fantastic striker, one of the best in the division for me. Um, we go down there Saturday, you're right, the, the away record isn't what it should be. If it was, um, I dare say we'd probably be comfortably in the playoff places. But the, the players are in form. You know, there's a lot of confidence and, and we go down there with confidence. Now which sitting mid table at the moment. Um, it's a game that Tom will be looking to get something from and a, a game that I'm looking forward to. And as you say, hopefully carry on this good start of 2014. It is. And uh, of course, people out, out there uh, watching this, uh, one question on everybody's lips, are Spartans in that playoff fight? Of course they are. Of course we are, you know, it's not just Spartans fans, Spartans players or, or anyone connected with the club saying it, you've got outsiders saying it. Um, I know Saturday we had a couple of press men there who, who both said that we're well in, in the uh, in the playoff fight and you've got to be positive, you've got to look to win every game and the more we do that, you know, the more chance there is of finishing one of those playoff spots and the league this year is horribly tight, you know, a couple of wins and you're in third and a couple of defeats you can be down to 12th so just got to make every point count. It's going to be a difficult one. Can you call it? Um, given my predictions record, probably not. <laughs> but uh, it will be a tight one. And I think Tom and Colin probably would take a draw down there. Um, it's a tough place to go. It's a, a small, compact stadium. But a, they're a boisterous crowd, as I found out last day of last season. Um, so I, I think we we'll probably would take a draw. But obviously you want to win every game. Last up on this week's show, we've got January's Goal of the Month competition where we pick two Spartans goals against each other. And we've got two crackers this month, Mark. We are. First up is Dan Maguire's opener. The first one of three he scored on the day against Stafford Rangers. That's Ibrook. Uh, Watson's going all alone. 
plays it nicely into the field. Grant Maguire, Maguire, Maguire's onside. He's going to try and. Oh, 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 oh to finish! And Spartans take the lead. That is just that's confidence, absolute confidence. There. Brilliant from Ian Watson. Great run from the right. Lovely ball. And uh, Dan Maguire, as I say, that's that's confidence of a player who's in form. And the second goal came at the weekend as Neil Hooks scored a 45th minute free kick against Chorley. It's Hooks landing it up. So is Robbie Dale. It's Hooks to take it. Spurs lead! Right on the start of half time. What a free two kick goals in two minutes. Neil Hooks just placed it past the wall, past Sam Ashton, and into the back of the net. You can vote for either goal on both Facebook and Twitter. On the Blind Spartans official Facebook, all you have to do is comment on the link with the name of your chosen goal scorer. And on Twitter, it's a retweet for Maguire and a favourite for Hooks. It's as simple as that. That's all from today's show, but you can keep up to date with Saturday's events at Nantwich via the Spartans official Twitter account, at Blythe underscore Spartans. We'll be back here in BSAFC TV in a couple of weeks' time, but for myself and Mark, we'll see you soon.